Hello, my name is David. And in these dire times, COVID-19 scaring the heck out of all of us. Here in California, we finally decided that everybody needs to wear a mask when they go outside. Well, certainly to grocery stores and shopping and to the gas station, etc. And I was frustrated. I looked online and <laughs> the soonest you'll get a mask is maybe in July. And I'd like one for tomorrow. I don't have any sewing materials. So I decided I could make something out of a shirt. And I'll show you how. Here I have in front of us some basic components. Scissors. Now I'm using a kitchen skewer. The spatula just for a cutting surface. Cut into the nice top and somebody's going to get grumpy at me. Probably me. Razor blade. This is a bit, you probably have this. This is a drawstring out of an old pair of shorts that I don't wear anymore. So I just cut the drawstring out. It's gonna soon be the string that holds my mask on. Almost every button down shirt, if you own a button down shirt, has a placket. <laughs> they all do. Um, some are only sewn on one side, like this sort of shirt. Placket is sewn right here on the back, but this is flappy. It's called an open placket. Uh, an Oxford shirt would have another set of stitching going down this side. The important part for us in making a mask is that this forms a little tube between the buttonholes and this edge is an already sewn tube of material. So I measured this is a distance from my face. Just wrap it around your face and figure out how long. And then I'm going to cut it. And uh, it's just a, an old shirt. It's made out of 100% cotton, much as the CDC recommends. And the, the whole theory behind having a, a cloth mask is that it can be washed or at least soaked in boiling water for a period of 10 minutes. Kind of like boiling an egg. Uh, you get the water up to boil. You put your shirt in or your mask, and just let it sit there. Um, 10 minutes, wring it out, and if you have the possibility of, let it dry in the sun. The heat from the sun and the sun itself helps to kill viruses. If you, you should have two masks according to the CDC. So you can see what I did. All I, I cut out the bottom corner of the shirt. So now I have a tube, a little flappy on one end, and closed at the other, because the placket's sewn down at what was the bottom of the shirt. So now I want my uh, mask and the, the cord to go through it to have a place to start. So that's why I use the spatula. I got it there in the little corner, so now I can make a, a small cut with my razor blade Just like so. And now I've got a tiny little opening, just big enough to get my drawstring through. Tiny little opening. So that becomes the top of the mask. Then I'm going to take my drawstring. My drawstring conveniently has a little flipped over bit at the end, but any way that you can kind of skewer the end of your um, drawstring to, or, you know, long bamboo skewer or a piece of uh, uh, a hanger wire, anything that's long and straight will get this done. And of course, when I'm on camera trying to make it happen, it's fighting back. Okay. Neatly ensconced. And now I'm simply going to pass it through my little opening here at the end and slide it right on through that tube. Pull it back, pull it out, and there, <laughs> looks like a diaper, but it's a mask. Now what does this mask look like?
And so here's what the mask looks like. Covers up the face, tie it on around the back of your head. It's a simple, simple thing, and a simple knot will do. Of course, now you've got hair in your knot, but hey, a little suffering for a lot of protection. So there we have it on. It's a little long, and I want extra protection. So I'm not sure if this is a mask or a cravat, but at the end, I'm as well protected as any mask on the market, washable, and you saw how long it took to make. Thanks for listening, guys. Hope it helps somebody.